FP students, hey, get ready. We're about to start in just a second, but here's some things that you need to know. One, be connecting on Instagram. Each and every day we have our devotionals that happen. And also every evening we have something for you from one of our student pastors that's fun and creative. So be a part of that. Go to our at FP students page on Instagram so you can be connected. Also directly after service, guess what? It's time for group at 8 p.m. every Wednesday night. So get connected with your small group so you can be a part of however they do small group, whether it's Zoom or FaceTime, whatever that looks like, get connected. So here's the thing, let's get ready because service is about to start in two minutes.
Hey, what is up, FP students? And welcome to our online campus as we've been doing the past few weeks. Hey, listen, we miss you so much in this season. And we're praying for you daily and we're hoping that you're growing. And speaking of growing, we're starting a brand new series tonight. It's called Grown. And it's all about growing in your faith with God and what that looks like. And here's the thing, we pray in this series as we get through with this series and we get to start making it back to our campuses that we've already seen you grow so much that there's already a revival starting. And we're praying that we don't wait till we get back to a physical campus before we see God move, but we're praying right now that God starts moving in your life like never before. So as we jump into this series tonight, all about grown and what that looks like, we're gonna start with the basics. So we're gonna start right at the beginning is that what is your passions about? What is the things that, that you have to have in your life to start off to, have, uh, to grow your relationship with God? And right off the bat, we got to understand this, that the right stuff leads to the right growth. The right stuff leads to the right growth. Here's the thing. Babies are so cute, right? They're, they're the cutest thing in the world. I personally wasn't a big fan of babies until I actually had a son. And I love babies now. They're the greatest thing ever. But here's the thing. It's cute that a baby has a passy, a little pacifier. My, my son called it a passy, but this is a pacifier. It's cute when you see a baby have a pacifier. You know, moms buy like, a whole crap ton of different pacifiers, right? And they get all the little things to hold them on and they take pictures with them. They think it's a cool thing. Some gets their names on them. But it's funny because after a certain point, pacifiers just don't make sense. Like for instance, I know a a boy that was five years old and had a pacifier, right? And he went into kindergarten and walked in with his pacifier and he looked strange. He got made fun of a lot because it doesn't make sense. He should have already grown out of having a pacifier. It's kind of funny because here I have this pacifier, and would it not be weird if I walked around and me being in my 30s and was like, yeah, this is great. This is me now. I love having a pacifier. And I walked around everywhere with a pacifier in my mouth. It would be the strangest thing ever. What if I preached this whole message with a pacifier in my mouth? It wouldn't make sense. People would make fun. People would probably call somebody that coughs and think I'm a weirdo because I have a pacifier, right? So here's the thing. we There's a lot of things that are so cool as a kid. It's, it's cool to be a kid. I, I love kids. I'm a, I'm a kid's pastor as well. I love kids. But it's cool to be a kid, but there's a point where we have to grow up. My mom always told me once I cert, hit a certain age, there's things that I had to stop playing with. You know, um, there's certain things as in um, the the connects, the little connect toys that you had. I had to stop playing with those when I was 16. Just joking. That didn't really happen. But there was things that when I hit a certain age, my mom would say, Anthony, you got to put those things away. You're too grown up for that. And actually in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, it talks about that. It says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I thought as a child. I acted like a child. But when I became a man, when I grew up, I had to decide to put away the childish things. And here's the thing I want to get at with all this tonight. You see, it's cool to be a kid, but eventually we have to grow up. And see, in the church today, I'm not talking about faith promise. I'm talking about the church as a whole is almost like a childish church. And here's the thing about a childish church. If you're in a, if you have a mentality of a child, there's a chance of when you're in a childish church that you hurt people and you cower down the culture. You, you cower down to the culture that comes in because when culture comes in, you listen to what culture says and you don't listen to what the Holy Spirit says. When the culture comes through, you listen to everything and go with the flow with the culture instead of what God is telling us to do when we're just in an immature level. And here's the thing, my generation and generations before me are almost at a level that we were very childish. You know, did you know this? I just wanna throw this fun fact out there, that the average person, that the average age of a person that plays video games, the average age of a gamer is 34 years old. That's, that's nuts to think about, right? It's crazy to think, but my generation that was coming up grew up in video games. So we automatically just never got rid of them. Every time a new system comes out, guess what? I'm already looking at a PS5 because I love playing video games. And it's almost like a sense of every generation, there was this childish way that they just never got rid of. And I want you to understand that because in that same sense, the church that we look at today, the generations before you all, you got, we have to understand this is that they actually have this childish way that maybe they've lost this connection, this power with God. And I'm not talking about the entire generation, but there's people that there's these moments that we have. Like, for instance, when when I was a sophomore in high school, 9-11 happened. That's how old I am. Just think about that. But 9-11 went down. And I want you to get this because there was this moment in my youth group when I was just a student. I remember because it happened on a Tuesday. And as this was going down, 
all that knot we had as youth service, a special youth service just for that knot. We all packed in. We had about 30. Well, that night we had over 100 show up. And it was an amazing moment. But two weeks later, we were back down to 30. And I'm not just talking about numbers, but I want you to see something. God gave us this opportunity. There was this awesome awakening happening, this eye-opening event that happened where we could have really seen more people come to know the cross than ever before. But yet we sat back and watched culture just take it away. But here's the thing. Your generation can be different. Our generations, we should just put our big boy pants on and said, I need to grow up. But your generation, this now generation, can stand up right now and be a part of a great movement that is happening. You see, COVID-19 is something that is an awakening. You see, this is a new thing that God's doing. God is doing a new thing, and I want you to get that because this generation is set up to see a modern-day revival that you can be a part of, that you actually have all the access and all the tools and the power of God is working through you if you just allow that. But before we can even get there, we have to understand it. We have to grow in our faith. And the first thing we need to notice about growing in our faith is this, that we have to understand that it starts with the basics. It starts with the basics. And we're going to talk about something that may sound weird, but it's spiritual milk. And where I want to read about this and starting everything off, it starts with the spiritual milk so that we can get the right stuff in us to grow is in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. It says this, Like newborn babies, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into a full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. You see, before we can grow, we have to crave this pure spiritual milk. Now, I want to talk about that for a minute because think about this. Milk is literally a superfood. Every, every creature, every creation starts off with milk. They start off with not a solid, but they start off with a milk. We start off with formula or a milk, and it's something we, we, we start our whole life with. We, get, we don't start as a newborn baby eating solids. We start with milk. And I want you to get this, because a, a cow's milk literally can turn a calf from just being an ordinary little calf to a 2,000-pound cow in just a little bit of time. It's literally a nature steroid. And I want you to get that the milk that we're talking about that we crave for. I'm not talking about literal milk, even though some of you may love milk. But here's the thing. When I talk about milk, milk is the basic teachings of Christ in our life. It is our foundation to get us set up so that we can grow in God more than ever before. So that all being said, let's talk about those basic things in our life that we should crave and, and seek after so we can got, see God in our lives more and we can grow in what he has for us. So the first thing is this. Baptism is the base. Baptism is the base. I want you to understand this, that baptism is, is all about us publicly putting on our Christian uniform, about us putting on our uniform to show others that we are born again, that we know who Jesus is in our life, that the old man's washed away and we have this new person that we became in Jesus Christ. Because I want you to get this, if we can't publicly in front of other Christians do a baptism, be a part of baptism and take the plunge, then how are we ever going to go and reach all of our friends and, and tell our families and complete strangers about who Jesus is in our lives. Now, the best example I have with this is this. When I, was, when I was first born again, when I asked Jesus into my life and I asked for that salvation, I went two years without baptism. I, did not, I, didn't, I didn't take it serious. I didn't really understand it, so I ran away from it. So in those two years, I never talked about Jesus to anybody. I never even brought it up. People would ask me when I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm saved. And I, I wouldn't really talk about it. I cowered up about it because I didn't really ever take that bold step. But when I finally went in and said, you know what? I, I have accepted Jesus. I need to be baptized. I've had this boldness come over where I told others of him because I took that courageous step. And I want you to get this. Before you can live a victorious and courageous life for Christ, you must first take the courageous step of baptism. I'm not saying that if you don't get baptized that you won't make it to heaven. But what I'm saying is it gives you a boldness because you get to go in front of people and proclaim to the world that you've been made new. So I want you to understand that. And if you, and if you haven't taken the step of baptism yet, what's stopping you from doing that? I challenge you this very moment, wherever you're at, and you're thinking about baptism, maybe you haven't done it yet, and you're thinking, I need to do that, I wouldn't even hesitate. I would text right now your small group leader or DM your student pastor, whoever it is that you can get in contact with, and ask about baptism and how that can happen for you. So we need to understand that baptism is the base. So next after that is time in with God's word equals growth out. Time in equals growth out. We need to understand that we have to have 
God's word in our life. And this is the thing I want you to get. The best way to get to know God is getting to know his word. The best way to build your relationship with God is getting in the word, getting in your Bible and understanding it more. Because get this, the Bible is a living word that is always looking to get in you and teach you something more and help you grow more than ever before. When we spend the time getting to know God through his word, we get to grow more than we ever have. And then we see that his heart for us and the will he has for our lives. And here's the best part, that the word actually is an open book test for us to live life. Jesus literally lived this perfect life and put it in the word. He had witnesses show that he lived this great life. And the word is there for us. When we study the word, when we get in our word, it literally combats whatever the enemy comes at us with. It literally is something that we can go to and it shows us every tactic the devil brings our way. But we, if we never understand the enemy, guess what? Every temptation comes where we're going to fall. So the word is so key. The more time in you spend with God, the more you see growth out from the word that you, you get from that. So here's the thing. I want you to understand that the word is there for you, but even more so after the word, it's prayer. Hey guys, I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Josh from the Farragut Campus. I'm gonna be bringing the next part of this message. Did not, I mean, Pastor Anthony brought an amazing word right there. Baptism being the base. Uh, you know, God's word is how we grow. The time that you put into God's word is going to equal the growth that comes out of it. And here's what I want to talk to you about tonight. And, and it's the source of your power. It's where your power fully comes from. And that is through prayer. That is your connection with God. And so I want to ask you this question right now, wherever you are, is are you plugged into the source? Are you plugged into the source? What, when, when, when things go wrong in your life, when things, uh, when, when, when things happen, what are you plugged into? What happens? Uh, and, and I want to, and, and here's, and here's where, you know, oftentimes when it comes to our prayer life with God, because I know that I found myself here before, uh, let me ask you a difficult question. Is your prayer life just you thanking Him for the food that's in front of you and then you telling Him good night at night? Is that it? Because there's been seasons in my life, especially throughout my high school years, when that was my prayer life. I would just thank Him for the food like I was taught as a kid. And at night, you know, you'd say your prayers before you go to bed and that was it. And so if you're a new Christian, if you're new and you just stepped into this, here's the deal. This is something that you learn. This is something that you grow in. So I'm not picking on you. But, but when it comes to your prayer life, God wants more from you than just God is great, God is good. Let us thank Him for our food. He wants that connection with you. He already knows everything about you, but He wants you to know Him. And so prayer is a two-way street. It's you talking to God and then you listening to what he has to say in your life. I want to kind of give you an example of this. So how many of you know what this is? This is a piece of PVC pipe. So if you were to walk around your house with a shovel, don't do this. Your parents may not like this at all. Uh, but if you were to walk around your house with a shovel, you would find this all in your yard. Because what this is, is this is the source for water in your house. This is how water gets in there. This is what guides it. This is what funnels uh, water into your home that comes through your sink, that comes through your shower, that goes through your bathroom, okay? And so uh, when it comes to God's power, God's power goes travels through the pipeline of prayer into your life. You see, prayer is the pipeline. That's how God's power gets from Him into your life. That's how you get that connection. That's how when things happen in your life, you receive that power to be able to move forward throughout whatever it is that you're facing. So I'm going to ask you another question, okay? I'm going to set this down before I destroy some of this expensive equipment that's around me. When things go wrong in your life, where is your hiding spot? Because we all have one. For some of us, maybe it's food. That when you have a bad day, when you get some bad news, when things aren't going your way, what is it that you run to to make you feel better? For some people, it's food. For some people, I'm going to get real here for a second, okay? It might be pornography. It might be drugs. It might be alcohol. It might be something that's, that's maybe not quite that serious. It might be a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Or it might be a video game. It might be something that's not, it's, it's really not wrong. 
But the reality is, is if your source is not God, if your hiding place is not God, then you're missing out on the power that he wants you to have. Go back to that verse in 1 Peter. This is what I love about this, okay? Uh, what Pastor Anthony was talking about. We want you to grow into a full experience of salvation. You see, the way that you're going to fully experience salvation, the way that you're fully going to experience this life that God has for you is through prayer. It's through that connection with Him. It's moving beyond the God is great, God is good. And it's moving into when you talk to Him about your day. When you talk to Him about your life, you talk to Him about what's going on. And you don't just stop there, but you listen. You listen to the things He has to say to you. You listen to what He's wanting to communicate into your life. That's how you grow. That's how you tap into that power. You see, my wife Casey and I, if we didn't talk that much, if we didn't have a whole lot of conversation, our relationship wouldn't be that great. But when I get home, I tell her about what's going on from my day. Uh, we talk about how we feel. We talk about what's going on in our hearts and our minds. And see, that's the same way with God. Is God wants you to talk to Him. He wants to be your hiding spot so that He will give you that power that you can walk back into those problems, you can walk back into those struggles, and you can see what He has for you, and you can approach them in an appropriate way. And not just, not just walk through them, but be victors in them. And so here's what I'm about to do, okay? And I know uh, that we've, we've conditioned you a little bit differently that when we pray, that that usually means that that's the end of the talk, okay? But that's not the case. Pastor David's going to come up here in just a few minutes, and it's going to be absolutely incredible. He's going to bring an amazing word for you. But I, don't, I want us to end this segment right here with prayer. So right where you are, whether you're sitting in your living room, whether uh, you're, you're sitting in your bedroom, you're watching on your phone, wherever you are, I want you to bow your head, I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to have a genuine connection with God right here, right now, even if it's just for a few minutes. Pray with me. God, thank you so much, Father, that, that you're not a God who ignores us. God, you're not a God that, that just created everything and then you just leave us to fend for ourselves. No, you're a God who's genuinely interested in our lives. You're a God who wants to be a part of every detail in our life. And Father, we invite you right now into this room, God, into these homes. Father, into wherever these students are, God, we invite you there because we want to know more about you. Thank you, God, for how much you love us. Thank you for how connected that you, how much you seek us out. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's been amazing tonight. Pastor Anthony and Pastor Josh have just brought an absolutely amazing uh, word in, re in regards to our first message in our new series called Grown. And I want to leave you with two more thoughts, two more steps, two more practical ways uh, to grow in our faith and taking that next step. And the first thing is this, is that community is critical. Catch that again. Community is critical. Uh, we found in this new season that we're in that uh, we miss each other. We miss our friends. Uh, we miss our people. We miss going to church. And imagine with me if small group wasn't a thing. You know, right now we'd be at home and we'd just be watching the service. If you'd watch the service, if there was no connection afterwards, if there was no connection throughout the week, what would life be like without community? because community is critical. At Faith Promise, we say we grow together. And that's so true because we believe that growth happens in a small group setting, in a group of people that you can lean on. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. And we truly believe that. We believe that you can just pour yourselves out to other people. The Bible says that forgiveness lies within one another, that if you uh, confess your sins to one another, then you'll receive forgiveness within that. And so when it comes to community, we believe that it is critical. Group isn't just something that we do uh, before or after a service on a Wednesday night, but it's something that's part of our daily lives. Many of you, you have a group chat or you have a Snapchat uh, with your small group, or you have different methods that you communicate with your small group. And more than likely, that happens more than just on a Wednesday. It happens on a Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all in between. And more often than not, when you go to church on Sunday, you sit together. Group is so much more than just a before Wednesday or an after Wednesday. Small group, community is critical when it comes to our faith, with our walk with Christ. Jesus was in community himself. God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So if Jesus needed community, 
then how much more do we need community ourselves? And the second thing is this, is salvation is the start. Our final point of the message tonight, salvation is the absolute start. And you see, in my time in ministry, in my time in just being a Christian, I've seen so many amazing testimonies of people uh, that were lost, but then have now been found. People that uh, were dead, but are now alive. Dry bones coming to life. And it's so amazing to see the start of something new. God fanning into a flame, uh, something that was just an ember before, something that seemed like it didn't even exist. But God, being God, can create new life within something that once seemed dead. And so whether it was at a camp or whether it was at a fusion or a movement or whether it was just a, a normal service on a Wednesday night, you know, God can move in so many different places. It doesn't have to just be at a service. It doesn't have to just be at a summer event. It doesn't just have to be at the places that we think God dwells in. God can dwell anywhere. God dwells within us. We are his hands and his feet. And so salvation is the start. It's amazing to see people that were once addicted, like Pastor Josh talked about just previously, people that were addicted, that were held down by chains and felt like they couldn't ever get over it, felt like they couldn't ever get past it, felt like they couldn't be forgiven, felt like they, they were just lost and had no purpose in life, to see them, to see the joy restored to see the peace restored, to see everything about them just change because the Bible says that we're a new creation in Christ Jesus, that the old man has died. And when Pastor Anthony talked about baptism, that symbol is literally us dying to our old self and coming up as a new creation in Christ. And so, so salvation is the absolute start when it comes to growth. And you see, before we can drink the milk, we have to say yes to the master. Because you see, if we start with everything else, we're just trying to act like a Christian. We're just trying to act like a Christ follower instead of actually taking that first step and following him and obeying and, and, and coming in line with what God has called us to be and to do. And that's to dwell and to live uh, within Christ, to identify with Christ. And so when it comes to salvation being the start, uh, without first embracing the basics of the Christian walk, you can't step into the fullness of what God has created for you. And so when it comes to the first step in the Christian walk, it's simply to accept Christ. Because you see, Jesus will never lead us astray. When we truly follow Jesus, he will never lead us astray. He'll only lead us to a path that is life-giving, to a path that is true, to a path that is righteous. And so when we accept him, we're accepting the fact that he came to this earth, that he was born of a virgin, and that he lived his life uh, just like we do, that he was 100% man, 100% God, but he was sinless. And so we believe that he took on our sin, that he went to the cross and he paid the price for us, that he went up on that cross with nails in his hands and nails in his feet, and he had a crown of thorns upon his head. We believe those things. We don't just think that it's a story, but we believe it to be true. And we know that when he died, when he gave up his spirit, he didn't just die, he gave up his spirit. And so when he did that, we know, we know that he went to the grave. And we just celebrated this past weekend that he rose again, that he conquered death in the grave. And we know, we believe for a fact, we don't just think it was an old story that's cool to talk about every now and then, but that's our lifeblood. It's the first start into being more like Christ. It's to accept the fact that he died for our sins, that he took on that shame, took on that guilt, took on everything that we deserved, took the death and the punishment that we deserved so that we could have eternal life with him in heaven. We believe that he came out of that grave and we believe that he now sits at the right hand of the Father. We believe in the power of the name of Jesus. That's the first step. If you do anything outside of that, then you're just trying to act like something. I, I preached this past Wednesday that if you fake it till you'll make it, once you make it, you'll be fake. And when it comes to eternity, we don't wanna get uh, to the finish line and look back and realize that we never made the right first step, that we never made the decision to truly accept Christ because otherwise you'll be fake. And the Bible says that there will be people that say, I've done this in your name, I've done that in your name. And God will say, I never knew you. We don't want to miss out on that first step. And so with salvation being the start, spiritual growth happens after salvation. Catch that again. Spiritual growth happens after salvation. God wants to give you a brand new start and a full life. And so tonight, if that's you, if you find yourself in that position and you're like, man, I've just been faking it. 
I, I've never really made a decision on my own. Maybe you've just been carrying your parents' faith. Maybe you've been carrying your grandparents' faith because it's what you just know to do. And maybe you find yourself in that position of feeling like not genuine, not real. And you wanna make that decision for the first time tonight. You can do that right where you're at. You don't have to be in a special room. You don't have to be at a special event. Because you see, when you call upon the name of Jesus, you shall be saved. The Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord, then you shall be saved. And you can do that right here, right now. And so that's on you. Your relationship with God, we, we can't have that relationship for you. You have to establish that. You have to take that first step yourself. So I encourage you, if you're feeling that nudge, that pull of the Holy Spirit on you, because it's the Holy Spirit that draws you into salvation. And so if you're feeling that, then I encourage you to take that next step call upon the name of Jesus. And then once you make that decision, there's gonna be a communication card right here on this screen that's about to pop up. And we wanna encourage you, let us know, because we wanna celebrate with you. Because the Bible says that heaven is rejoicing at the fact that you've accepted Christ and you are now inherited into the kingdom of God. And so we wanna celebrate with you as well. And we wanna rejoice and we wanna have a party and just you know, be so proud of you. And so also your small group leader would love to know that as well. So as you go to small group, in a few minutes. Let your small group leader know that you've made that decision. Don't feel shame because you've been in group for six months, a year, five years, and you're just now making, there's no shame to that. They're gonna be so excited for you that you've taken that first step in your walk in faith. So share that with your small group leader. And so we're so proud of you. We love you so much. And we hope that you enjoy the rest of this series called Grown. And we will see you next Wednesday. Have a great time in small group.